ओम तकणेशय विमहे वक्रतुंगय धीमहि तन्नो दंति हि प्रचोदयाति ओम ओम तत्परं पर्याय विमहे ज्ञानधिंगीश्वराय धीमहि तन्नो गुरुः प्रचोदयाति ओम ओम योग महर्षि दत्तु स्वामी गीतानंद गिरी गुरु महाराज की जय योगेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचम मलं शरीरस्य च वैयकेन योपकरोतम प्रवरम मुनीनम पतंजलिम प्रांजलिर आनतोस्मि ओम अतः साधन पदः अहिंसा सत्य आस्तेय ब्रह्मचर्य अपरिग्रह यामह The yama include ahimsa, satya, asteya, brahmacharya, and aparigraha. What are the yama? What are these moral restrictions? Maharishi Patanjali enumerates them as ahimsa, non-violence, satya, truthfulness, asteya, moon-stealing, brahmacharya, living in tune with one's creative impulse, and aparigraha, non-covetness. The yama are a practical means of achieving control over the lower animal nature, so that the higher human and humane nature can manifest. The yama deal with controlling innate survival tendencies that were useful in animal incarnations, but prevent spiritual growth once one attains the human level of existence. Modern men do look like humans, but how many are actually humane? Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, 2,300 years ago defined humans as featherless bipeds. How right he was. How apt he was in very diplomatically suggesting that the average human lives like a chicken darting here and there, aimlessly. Maharishi Patanjali names Ahimsa as the first of the Yama. The first rule of yoga, and of medicine too, is do not harm. This is true in personal practice, as well as in teaching and therapy. When a teacher or therapist finds one who does not know something, they should be honest enough and admit I don't know. Of course, it is important to follow up on that admission of ignorance by filling out the lack of knowledge. One avoids making the same mistake twice. This is an important part of Ahimsa. Few people are honest enough to say, I don't know. Don't let your ignorance hurt anyone, even yourself. It is easy to feel that one is perfect in Ahimsa just because one isn't physically hurting anyone or anything. Yet, most are blissfully unaware of how much hurt is caused by unconscious deeds, words, and even thoughts. Becoming conscious of violent tendencies is the first step in Ahimsa. The second step is to bring about a higher conscious control over such negative tendencies. It is also important not to allow others to hurt us. You may not hurt others, but allowing them to hurt you physically, mentally, emotionally, and psychically is also a form of himsa. This must be understood if growth is to flourish. Violence is a survival mechanism in lower life forms. As the poet Sir Edwin Arnold observed in his epic poem, Light of Asia, the Buddha looked out upon the world and saw one vast spectacle of mutual murder. If one wishes to transcend the bestial state of existence, one must burn out this innate animal tendency towards violence. All of the yama are related. How can you observe truthfulness, satya, without hurting others? It is not as if each yama 
is in a box that you perfect and then move on to the next. The practice of one yama is the practice of all. It is important to know the intention behind an action. Teacher and parent must correct their students and children. This may be difficult. The intention behind the action is so important. It is important to be able to think, why is this person correcting me? Is it that they want me to become a better person? Or are they just acting as a consequence of their ego? It is easy to feel that one is telling the truth and yet go around hurting everyone in sight. One must think before speaking. One must watch thoughts and words for they turn into irrevocable actions. This awareness must be accompanied by introspection into one's speech as well. Is it the right thing to say, the right time to say it, or the right person to speak the words to? Unless all of the rights are in alignment, one is not in tune with Dharma. If one is not in tune with Dharma, one cannot practice satya. Clouded perceptions can never reveal the real truth. Each person has at least one perspective. Reality will always contain multiple views. As a clear example, step back and take a look at the multiple man-made organized religions. Each proclaims they are the only way and that the others are false who is true? Who is false? At the other extreme are the many who fear to speak the truth because they don't want to hurt anyone. One must cultivate the right balance. Amaji often tells us, speak the unpleasant truth pleasantly. Excellent and sane advice. Virtually everyone feels they are competent in a stay -up. They have never robbed a bank. They do not snatch other people's purses. They are not a thief. What is the larger picture? Do we know what stealing actually is? Do we have any idea about what belongs to us and what does not? Do we steal other people's emotions, time, happiness? Do we steal their chance for evolution? Is it common to steal ideas of the internet. Many universities have installed anti-plagiarism software to prevent students from handing in this that are just a copy and paste job. What can be said about modern yoga guru trying to copyright yoga? Are they not stealing from the rishi? Brahmacharya is interpreted mostly as the restraint of one's sexuality, but this is a very limited view. Most great rishi of ancient India were married and had families. In fact, on many occasions, the wives, rishi patni, were even greater than their illustrious husbands. Naturally, children born out of such exalted unions were evolved souls. Acharam means to be in tune or to be living in line with some concepts of a higher nature. The term is used when talking about the orthodox lifestyle in India. It is also part of the term acharya that refers to the one who teaches by example. Brahmacharya refers to the effort to live in tune with the harmonious creative principle. How can we live in tune with creative impulses without being false to the higher goal. This is the essence of Brahmacharya. Aparigraha is the conscious control of the tendency to covet. Non-covetness is one of the most difficult qualities to achieve. Most people believe the world exists only for their misuse and abuse. The stage of grabbing and grasping is part of the normal psychological development in two-year-olds and is integral to human development. One is expected to grow out of it as an adult. Many adults are still stuck in this place of development, however. This yama 
implies the ability to differentiate between need and greed. To paraphrase Mahatma Gandhi, there is enough in the world to satisfy every person's need, but not enough for even one's person's greed. The mantra of modern consumerist society is, greed is good. Greed fuels the economy. Greed produces more and more. But can the earth sustain the greed of its now more than six billion people? Om Loka Samasta Sukhina Bhavanti Sarve Janaha Sukhina Bhavanti Om Shanti 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 Om